How many people conquer cancer? I guess I need to turn this on. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, thank you. I'm almost, I don't know how many people are in here. Most of y'all are probably gonna start crying. You know, you quit playing sports, you wanna go into coaching. Well, I really love baseball, I wanted to give back, and I really love teaching and helping people. And um, so I just wanna get into coaching. First year, straight to high school. Um, Went to Parkway High School as an assistant baseball, uh, assistant football. Uh, coach Allen Carter hired me there. Um, after that year, the head baseball coach became the head basketball coach. His name is Bruce Chavin. Uh, and then we just stayed there. And we, we had one senior my first year, uh, and um, David Norcross. And we just built something that the community loved. Parkway has always been pretty good in baseball before we got there, and, and the kids and the community just took it to a whole nother level. The more successful you're going to be, the more people's going to knock you down, try to knock you down, 100%. So in 97, um, Somehow we make it to uh, the championship game at John Curtis in New Orleans. And uh, wasn't supposed to win. We weren't supposed to be there, but the kids believed in each other and they trusted each other. And uh, we gave up two runs in the bottom of the eighth inning and got beat. And then in 98, we won it. Uh, beat Arch a very talented team, Archbishop Pannon, seven to, seven to one. Ninety-nine, we got beaten in the quarters. I, I called it. I, re, I didn't retire from baseball, but I retired from high school baseball. So for two years, I was assistant coach at Bozeman Community College. It was a very humbling when you're leaving. You know, you, you're one of the best high school programs in the state of Louisiana, and now you become assistant coach. Basically, I was third base coach, BP thrower, and fungal hitter. You know, but I learned so much because I was humbled. And then the opportunity arose at Captain Shree. Really enjoyed our five years there. Um, tremendous talent. We won it. Uh, we won the state championship. State championship in '06. And one of our sayings, uh, especially at Captain Shree, was, "Hey, expect the worst, and be prepared." You know, expect the worst because if you expect the worst and the best happens, if you expect the worst and you're ready, you're ready. Yes, yes. You always ask me. How we met, and I have to tell this story, is she had a, a Christmas, a formal, that she, um, that one of her friends asked her, so you ought to ask Ronnie Coker. And I've never, I hadn't talked much to her. Anyway, she asked me and I, and I said, I can't, I can't go. I said, I have my kids. He is right, he did turn me down the first time. Um, but when it was for the kids, that told me everything I needed to know. And then we just started going out. And I just fell in love with him. Um, he was exactly, uh, he was more than I could have ever, ever imagined. Um, um, I always ask myself why. You know, I, he, is, he loves me. Be committed. You got to be intentional every day. When I was administrator, when I was athletic director at Airline, I would tell the coaches that. 
April 23rd, I'm sitting there. Oh man, I got a month. Our conversations a lot were about his retirement. I said, it feels like somebody is stabbing me in my side and it hurts. He just, he wasn't, he came home from school. He doesn't come home. He, he, he's never been sick. Our entire, since I've met him, he has never been sick. She goes, would you be mad at me if the shoe was on the other foot and I'm refusing to go to quick care? I said, I'm on my way to coastal care right now. So kicking and screaming, he went. Um, and we were going to meet at the post office after he went to coastal, coastal care. And, um, and then we we're going to go to Grand Cane. So I go to coastal care. I go in there, and there's a little girl named, she's about 28 years old. She's a doctor. She knows everything. Came, Dr. Lacey came back from coastal care and said, um, you're awesome. Your blood count is better than mine. Your white blood cells are better than mine. Your liver is, everything is great about you. Okay, wow. Okay, that's good. But, hey, do you have time to take an x-ray? Because you said your stomach was hurting. How long will it take? Being a man. I really said this. Hey, how long is this going to take? I just want a shot. Give me some energy. I really said this. Well, for some reason, he felt a text would be okay in saying, um, just got done with coastal care. I have a large mass, and I have to have emergency surgery tonight. 615, this guy comes in. He knows everything. Dr. Brantley Boyd is his name. Incredible young man. He goes, you see this right here? So we went to um, the emergency room, and, and, and that's when we, we heard. And the next words out of his mouth shook my world. Now remember, just a few hours ago, I'm eating a greasy cheeseburger or something in my office. I'm living life like it's incredible. At 6.15, the guy says, that's a mass. I was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer and uh, at 6.15. I felt like the, it stopped for a minute and I laid in the hospital bed with them and, and we just, and, uh, and then, of course, him, all right, you know, he's back to, all right, let's, let's get a plan. And so I'm like, okay, let me get out of my thoughts. Dr. Brantley Boyd said, what? Did you not hear what I just told you and your wife? That you were dying? That you got possible stage four colon cancer? That you definitely 100% have colon cancer, and it's most likely on your liver. Do you not understand you're dying, man? Okay, what's the plan? The doctor said, he needs chemo yesterday. That's when it hit. April 29th. Remember, tw April 23rd, I'm sitting in my office worrying about what I'm going to do when I retire. April 29th. April 29th comes along. Dr. Katochi. Hey, man. You got stage four cancer. That hurt. I said, okay. When do I start my chemo? It took about five hours. Uh, maybe a little bit more, just depends. Maybe a little bit less. Uh, and then when I leave, they, I have a slow drip pouch that I wear gave you a list of symptoms, everything from, you know, headaches, body aches, uh, diarrhea, uh, coughing, hiccuping. I was the weakest I've ever been in my life, ever. And I didn't tell anybody this. I told my wife, I said, I am dying. I am dying. I said, Kelly, you don't understand. I am dying. When cancer happened, and roles were reversed. It, there are many, many areas that I'm like, Lord, I don't, I don't think I can do. I, I, I'm not strong like that. I'm not. Ronnie could do this, you know, but I'm. I love you, Lord. Thank you. I'm not strong like Ronnie, and these are the conversations that I would have. And but God just kept saying, Why are you doubting yourself when I'm right here? I mean, you.
stage four colon cancer. April 29th, May 2nd, chemo started. I'm gonna speed up a little bit, okay? So we go to MD Anderson on November 10th, and, um, and I asked the Dr. Sanchez, I said, man, I want to know the truth. No one has told me the transparent truth about this colon cancer. How long do I have? He goes, what? Linda, he goes, what? You want to know how long you got left to live by me? He goes, you want me to tell you the truth? I said, yes. Two years. I win the day, every day, for as long as I can breathe. That's my motto. Y'all know that. Be great, be great, be great. Win the day, gun day, win the day. It's easy to say, harder to do, when the guy that knows more than you ever will about medicine and cancer tells you you've got less than two years to live. That means i got two years to live. I only have two years to see my sons and my wife. You're not promised tomorrow, but it just became so real that, you know what, we're not. None of us are. So why are we focused on his cancer? Two years, all right, you know. Um, but that two years could be five years. That two years could be a day. We don't know. It's not, the doctor's timeline is not God's timeline. Let's make the most of the time we got. That's what we've been saying all along. Let's go. And I just had a peace. Yeah, I got two years to live. On November 10th, yes, I got two years to live. I love it, man. I love it. I love it. Hey, I'm losing hair and you gain. The first time I walked in the gym, I haven't been to an athletic event at Airline. Coach Ronnie from the video. Coach Stoker, part of the Airline community for 13 years. You go back to coaching. Coach Stoker, a man of faith. That's why I got into coaching. Because we're actually making a difference. Over over the course of a coaching career, you develop, a coach better develop mental strength, or he ain't gonna be a coach long. Or he's not gonna be a good coach long. Um, because you, you, you have to take it. God, I am so sorry. How can I let a human being tell me I got two years to live when you might take me home tomorrow? You might let me live for 20 years. I don't know, but I do know one thing. I'm going to live every day like it's the last. Whatever you choose me to do, I'm going to do it. Because he's telling me. Y'all don't clap for that. That's nothing. Y'all wait for what I'm about to tell you. January 10th, we come in and uh, we took a CT scan the week before. Tonight, that's what our shirt's all about. That's why we're here tonight. Once diagnosed with cancer, man of faith. That same doctor that told me I got less than two years to live, you know what he told me? He goes, your liver, and he goes, your lung. Those spots on your lung, they're gone. There's only one, there's a streak there. It may be scar tissue, but there's no, no cancer on your lungs. What about my liver? And he goes, you don't have any lesions in your liver. You're cancer free. I said, you gotta be kidding me. He said, there's, there's no cancer. Your liver. I go, I go, okay. Dr. Kadoji, the obvious question is, he goes, you're cancer free. Golly. He goes, you're cancer free and you're in full remission. Obviously a different one, but we both just sat there like, huh? <laughs> and 
Praise God. I can't, I can't accurately, I don't have the words to describe, stunt. I don't know that office, cancer free because of him and because of belief. Because in a two months time, I go from having two years to live, which I may die in two years. I'm not afraid of dying. I'm not, I'm just, I'm afraid of not living the way God wants me to live. That's what I pray about every day. When he's ready for me, I get to go see my dad, you know. I got to get to go see my, my father-in-law. I don't know if and when the cancer is ever coming back. If it does, it does. And I'll show it, I'll do everything. Uh, we'll, we'll keep doing it every day like we're doing right now. God, I'm going to show up for battle. You fight for me. And he fights. He's undefeated. When is it going to come back? Is it going to come back? And that, you could literally dwell on that and not live life. And so we choose God. We choose our faith. And we're not going to live in the what ifs. It could come back, absolutely, but it could not. And so we're living each day to its fullest. It's not for me to understand why God chose me to come to y'all and tell you that I am cancer free. That's, I'm not gonna question him. I'm gonna believe in it and I'm gonna win every day. And I, won't, I challenge y'all to win every day. The Win the Day Foundation, it goes back to how many, how many people can we help? Um, now, of course, the answer is you help one at a time. Because we're gonna mentor these kids. We ain't like, hey, here's a basketball, here's a go. Or here, here's a golf ball, here's a, you know, a wedge, go. We're gonna mentor you in, in a way that we think is best, and that is in a Christ-like way. How can so many people reach out and love me? But all I ever want to do every day is love people. That's it. It doesn't matter who you are. I like to think that, that God has used me to make a difference in some of their lives.